Good morning, Sam. Hey, good morning, Ricardo. Thanks for joining. No, thanks. Thanks for giving us another chance. Uh, it was nice of you guys. Yeah, no worries. Uh, let's give it another couple of minutes for more folks to join and we can get started. Yeah, yeah sounds good. All right, so it's so just maybe five of us, but the uh, meeting will be recorded. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining today. Um, today we have Lingo, uh, Lightweight ML Proxy and Autoscaler for Kubernetes. Um, excited to hear about it, so yeah, take it away. Um, yeah, so I hey, am I'm, I'm Sam, I'm one of the uh, co-creators of Lingo and uh, Nick, Nick Stockner is here too, I see. Um, he's not here, we, we've both been working on this. Um, yeah, I, I, any anything specific you guys want to cover, like I can do a quick like introduction of it, and then we can do a live demo, and yeah, that sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, let's start with that. <clears throat> um, why don't you zoom a while? Um, a moment. I think it should have it all set. Yes. Yeah, I think you use, you can share at the bottom share screen. Yeah, no, I I'm just gonna share my whole screen. I don't know how I it's gonna make it easy for myself. Um, so yeah, this is Lingo. Um, it's a like you said, it's a lightweight ML proxy and auto skater. Um, the key things you get is it makes it very easy to serve uh large language models on CPUs or GPUs. Um, we provided. You can just use a familiar OpenAI API endpoint, specify the model name, and or route the request to the correct deployment that serves that model. Um, we have native messaging integration, so it's very easy to do large-scale batch processing where you just send your uh, request to a message bus like Kafka or PubSub, and then Lingo listens to the same topic and will just process all those requests and send, it, send them back to another topic. Um, we support scale from zero, uh, scale back to zero, without having errors. So we hold the request in 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 the proxy, and then do the scale up transparently. Um, we queue requests inside of Lingo, so you don't overload the backend servers, um, and it also allows us to do scaling based on on a moving effort. Um, we don't have any dependencies, so there's no additional complexity of having to have a service mesh for more advanced routing, like we have it all natively built into Lingo itself. So the only thing you need is a vanilla Kubernetes cluster, and then you can pretty much install Lingo. Um, yeah, um, so I already did this, but if you want to install it, it's, it's you just add the repo, install Lingo, and then you can start installing um, models like an embedding model server, which I also did. So in my cluster, I already have uh, this installed, and but it's scaled to zero right now. So oh, I might need to do the authentication flow. Give me one moment. It expires every day. Uh, yeah, and one thing to note about the install is it's completely namespace, so you don't need cluster admin credentials to install it. So if you're in a multi-tenant cluster and you only have namespace credentials, it should work for you. It makes sense. So I already installed a few. I installed Lingo um, and I configured it to use uh, a specific topic. Then I have Mistral 7B and Mixdraw 
and this tapey. But if you look at the parts, the only thing that I set the min scale to one of is the mix raw deployment because it takes slightly longer to do the scale up for a demo with GPUs involved. Um, but this one is the uh, the one that, that is listed here. We have not, uh, it's scaled to zero right now. So what I wanted to show in this first demo is that when we send it a request, an OpenAI API compatible request, this is, uh, you might not, like, this is an OpenAI API compatible request. And if I just uh, run that, let's see. Uh, uh, let me get pods words. And if I run this request, all we will see is that Lingo takes in this request and then directly starts creating a pod for it. It will scale it up, it will wait for it to become ready, and then it sends that request to this pod. Um, and then the end user just has a slightly longer first request and it gets the response, which is pretty quick. Um, so th that's the thing that we have with scale from zero. Like we can send a request and it will just hold it, um, scale up transparently, send the response to the back end, and then send the response back to the end user that just had a slightly longer first request time if, if there's a skill from zero. Um, this was for CPU. If GPU nodes need to scale up, obviously it's slightly longer, um, but the same concept applies, which is fine for batch use cases. Um, skill from zero is, is, you're not gonna, an end user in the chat interface is not gonna wait for six minutes for scale up to finish on a very large model, but for batch is actually totally fine. Um, Makes sense. So, um, yeah. Let me go back. So this was just like uh, an embedding API endpoint with an embedding server that's very minimal and can run on CPU. Um, we can also do um, we can also do the same with a large language model. For example, you saw and and oh yeah, the other thing that I wanted to show is after there is no request going in for a while, it will scale back to zero. So that's terminating that pod, and it will go away in a, in a moment. So that is one and then what did i else want to show oh yeah the other thing that i wanted to show is the uh the mixed raw model that we also have backed with the same ml proxy but the only thing that we're changing is we're changing this this model field in the http body and that allows us to now lingo will now send that request to the correct um, um backend that's serving that model and if you look at our if you look at our deployments, um, you will see that we have served model name and we have an annotation at the deployment object itself, which says specifies which models this serve. And that's how we're able to identify where to route this uh, request in the Lingo uh, proxy. So yeah, we see, we, we send the same request. We send it to the Lingo. I, I did a port for it to my local host, to the remote Lingo services running in the Kubernetes cluster. Um, and then we ask it, who was the first president of the United States? I I, I think this is right. I did my US civics test not a while ago. <laughs> so I, 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 this, this looks correct to me. Um, and this is just- hallucinating, so. Sorry? It might be hallucinating now. Just, you know. yeah. Um, and yeah, th this is the, um, so we, the, the key thing is here, we have the same open AI compatible request that we can just send to this Lingo endpoint and it will able to uh, route based on the model that's provided in the STP model. And, and you can even, if you were to use the Python open AI client, you can use that same Python open AI client to talk to Lingo. Um, yeah, so another thing that I deployed in this cluster is just for making it easier to show in a demo is I deployed a very simple uh, chat UI. And that chat UI actually does use the... Uh, so if you look at this chat UI, it does this use this the OpenAI Python client. And it uses Streamlet to build a very simplistic uh, UI so we can chat with uh, 
model served by Lego. Like you can see that I only, the only thing I changed is I changed the API host and then we don't need an API key. Um, I think I have this. Uh, Any, anyone got questions they want to ask to Big Straw, um, let me know. I can ask them too. Um, we're going to change the API host to Lingo since we're running AI Chat GI within, within Kubernetes. So we can just directly access it by the service name. And then we are going to um, run it something. I don't know. What is the CNCF? Unless someone else provides better questions, um, I'll make something up. Um, it seems it's doing a pretty good job. Um, but yeah, the key thing is like you can't run all of this within your Kubernetes cluster. Um, it never leaves it, so you could run it in any environment as well. Um, and and this is actually proxying to a local Mistral, right? It's not a. It's within the same Kubernetes cluster. So yeah, good question. So within the same Kubernetes cluster, I have a few deployments right now. Um, Mixtral, Lingo, um, and Mistral, but the Mixtral is already scaled to one, since otherwise it, it makes the demo not so. So yeah, it's local within the cluster. It's not local within my laptop. Yeah. And, that, and that's being served by VLLM, right? So that's yes, the... correct. Yep. <laughs> Technically, we don't have a hard requirement for VLLM. Anything that any any inferencing server can serve an OpenAI API compatible backend would be pretty much plug and play. Um, so we don't like we, we, it's, yeah, actually lingo is, is not, it, it doesn't require a VLM, but it's what we do all our, uh, work on. It just works well in my view. Yeah. Um, so it looks like it did it, um, pretty good. And you know what CNCF is? I didn't know this. <laughs> What is a CNCF tag? And um, I, I actually ran this query. I'm, it, it knows that it's a technical advisory group. Maybe it's a common term. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure if anyone else had all the questions they want to ask Mr. But I just wanted to, the, the main thing I wanted to show is that how easy it is to just reuse your existing code that already built on the Python OpenAI client. And they can build a very simple chat interface with a model that's backed by Lingo. And then also, if you want to change model, like let's say you have a hundred models that are scaled to zero, you can just change the model here and then it will talk to another model um, without having to change your API host. So the API host stays the same, but your model might change. And because of, with Lingo, we don't need any API keys. Um, it's all internal. Uh, we could build it in, but we don't have that. Um, but you, you just don't, it will just get ignored. Like you can pass whatever you want here. Um, with the question, one question is uh, the model string here that has to match well, whatever model you have running in the backend. Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so wait, no, I don't want this. Um, it has to match the annotation that you put on a deployment. So if you look at our deployments, uh, describe deployment, uh, make straw. So Lingo will look at the, will look at the, um. Annotation. So we have a, a controller that watches that. Um, where is it? Oh, here it is. So this needs to match. If this doesn't match, then it doesn't know where to route it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, where was I? Yeah. Any other questions, actually? I think, yeah. Please keep the questions coming. I, I'm much more fun for me than me just talking for a while. Got any other question, questions from? I have a question, um, but I joined like a bit late. Um, so my my question is, so actually two questions. The first one is, uh, how is Lingo different from any LLM proxy? Um, uh, and the second question is, I believe you're, so there is uh, Knative serving and they have also routes and scale from zero. Are you using any of the backing features of uh, serving, or is this a net new 
uh, functionality that you're building. No, yeah. So I uh, had a few questions. All, um, by uh, uh, the the first one, what was your first? Anyway, I can start with the Canadian and the Istio one. So we we don't have any dependencies on Istio or Canadian, and we don't use that. Um, we like I think we want to make it. We want to keep it lightweight and very minimal versus having a lot of dependencies that might do a lot more than what we need for having just an ML proxy that. Um, can also do auto scaling. Um, so yeah, I think your first question was, um, how is it different from other uh, proxies like Light LM or other uh, proxies that are there? Um, our, we have a built-in uh, Kubernetes auto scaler that is tied with the proxy, so it will hold the request and then we'll do the scale ups. Um, yeah, I I. I I see it as being more Kubernetes native versus a generic uh, like ML proxy that can do like also routing between OpenAI backends and and cloud and like public APIs. And our solution is very much focused if you have models that are running within your Kubernetes cluster. Um, we also build in some scaling that is based on a queue where the moving average and how many requests are waiting is used for scale ups. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's you, you could. Uh, Knative is another like is a project that that is not just focus on the MLPs. We our requests are all like we try to focus on what are the what is the current standard of how you send a request and they people have used the OpenAI client a lot and they are familiar with those APIs and a lot of the open source projects like VLM, they support an OpenAI API a compatible server. So our routing is based on the HTTP body, which has a model field, which I don't think is something you would easily do within um, Knative, yeah. The, the reason I was asking is that uh, someone was just showing me a demo with with skin native serve and it, it's some some of the functionalities are not native but I think they were running a minimum set of things that I believe your your tool is nice for um so I was asking yeah. to to better understand that uh, that uh, uh, overlap um, yeah but so, yeah. and and then to your uh so you said Kubernetes native uh is are you like using the uh, so so are using the, the the Go API or like how how would you define Kubernetes native in that case? Yeah, I, I think so. We have a lot of things that are built in where we watch the pods over the where we watch the endpoints of a deployment, and then we um, so we have a controller that watches the deployments, watches the endpoints, um, and then we scale directly down or up deployments. So like it's Same all. Sorry, I can take ahead. a stab at this one too. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So by Kubernetes native, um, what Lingo is, so Lingo sits here in your cluster. Um, and if we saw Sam, Sam was submitting a request. So let's say this is. Are you sharing it? Oh, am I not? Let me stop sharing. I'm not sure. Yeah. Can you see it? Yep, we can see. Okay, so I'm the client sending curl requests to Lingo. Uh, Lingo is just a HTTP proxy that has uh, queuing in in here. So all these requests are going to um, are going to queue up inside of Lingo, um, and then Lingo is going to uh, by by Kubernetes native or Kubernetes aware. Lingo is not just a HTTP proxy, but it is also a controller. So it's using the implementation would be uh, if you're familiar with like Cube Builder or like controller runtime libraries. Uh, Lingo is implemented in Go, so it's it's reusing the same libraries that uh, that Kubernetes uses when it interfaces with the Kubernetes API. Um, so Lingo might see all these requests, and the first request it's going to so the first request is going to look for a deployment like what Sam was saying. So deployment, and then there's like an annotation, and that's in this annotation. There's a model name in here. 
uh, so Lingo keeps track of all the deployments with these model names. And it says, OK, well, if, if I see this request is coming in for, for model name, let's say all these are coming in for model name A. Um, on the first request, it's going to say, go and make sure that this scale is at least one. So uh, at least one replica. And so that's the instantaneous like scale from zero that's going to happen. When, when that occurs, this deployment will go ahead and create a pod. So the backing pod, this might be pod for, um, this is like a, in, in the case that we're showing, this is like a VLM pod serving Mistral or, or a, a different model. Uh, once Lingo watches, so Lingo is also going to watch for for endpoints inside the Kubernetes API. And once it sees an endpoint for this pod, it will then know it can go ahead and send this request through. So we think about like, this is kind of like more of the control plane side of things. And this is more like the data plane side. Um, and then the, the, the response will go back to the client. Um, there's also a an auto scaling loop in here. So Lingo is going to, the auto scaling loop is going to monitor like what is, what is the queue size? And based on that, instead of just saying, hey, I need at least one replica, the auto scaler is going to run a, a, a moving average and it's going to say, I need you know, three replicas. And that's how you go from, from one to three uh, as opposed to zero to one. Uh, does that help answer the question? It does, um, absolutely. Uh, just my only concern is where we converge as a community. Uh, right uh, on on the efforts for like scaling LMs in general. Like if I if, if we're putting a reference architecture in general and saying you know here here's where you can build a plugin for a scaling logic that you know would work with uh, and has knowledge of the underlying or the backend LLM runtime, for example. Right? So as an example, where we we build that long term. But I I also see merits in and, and being lean. Um, yep. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think what you're getting at is like, hey, why, why is you know, Istio, Knative not, not in the mix here? Because there's some duplication of what, what occurs there. So the, the first answer is just simply that um, there's a, it is a swallow, I, I would say, to, to say that you require Istio and Knative to, to adopt this project. It's not, I think it's a lot of, in a lot of cases that that's the right call. Uh, however, there's also, there are also other ambitions here. So when you, when you're scaling GPUs, uh, there's a few different attributes of GPUs that, that make, that we might want to um, take into account in Lingo. One of those is that they're expensive. So we, one of the, the, uh, the features we're planning on building into Lingo is, is cost aware scheduling. Uh, and then the other attribute that we're planning on building in is uh, uh, availability aware scheduling. So GPUs are, are expensive and they're also uh, not, they're, they're in high demand, so they're not very available. Uh, there are some interesting uh, projects coming down the Kubernetes pipeline around like uh, the provisioning request API and other APIs where you can, you can start to get some guarantees around uh, around instead of just scale, turning on like creating a pod and then cluster auto scaler scales up uh, and just retries over time until capacity becomes available you can kind of get ahead of that process and submit a provisioning request API uh, so we're we're imagining lingo might interact with that API in the future uh, so that's one part so there's there's a in, in my head it was probably a little bit more It'd probably be a pretty complex task to to accomplish some of these more like GPU aware uh, aspects if we were to try to implement all of that by you know in a in an Istio or, or K native world and so that that's I hope hopefully that kind of clarifies some of that. It does it does yeah yeah and then additionally and you know all this might be possible with Istio and, and Knative as well. But um, we, we're also hoping to implement things like 
like here's your deployment for for Mistral, let's say. Uh, but if you can't scale this up because you are out of capacity inside of like your cluster, so I say like this is your cluster, um, then Lingo uh, should be able to reach out if you set a policy in there and say, oh well, let me let me fulfill your request instead with some uh, some you know third party API out here. And be aware of the fact that, like, you know, the, what is the cost per token over here, and what is what is our average cost per token here? Um, so there's there's some of that 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 I think it it might just at the end of the day it might just be simpler to implement this kind of stuff inside of you know a standalone uh, project as opposed to trying to configure um, all the other uh, components that you would rely upon to do all this. Yeah, um, I think the other feature that we, well, I guess Cave has also messaging integration. So I think, yeah, I think the, the key is not, we're not saying you cannot do any of this with another project. I think we're trying to have a more simplistic user experience that is really tailored to the um, people that are using LLMs today versus a generic serving framework that also adds some ML, but it, it might require some more work on the end user to get it to work well. I think that's the, yeah, that's the reason why we were like we have more control over the end-to-end -end experience if we um, don't rely on Knave and Istio. There's also so if in some enterprises what you're what you're given is you're given like a large cluster and you're given a namespace inside that cluster, yeah. and you're not and these these enterprises sometimes have a very well like the, a whole group that manages the Kubernetes cluster and they have. A lot of processes in place for how they manage and, and lifecycle and version all the cluster components. Sometimes it's it's difficult for for a team that is just wants to run some some uh, you know some inference to to have to go to that other team and say, hey, I I now need Istio in my cluster. I now need K Native, and and that that's a big barrier inside some enterprises I've found. So Lingo is is. You can just take it and install it like you like you would just install a regular deployment. And most most multi-tenant clusters, that's a that's access that most users would have. Hey, hey. Yeah, go ahead and record. Uh no, I had a different question, but go ahead, Adele, if you wanna if you have a follow up. No, I, I was just going to, uh, to say that Istio and in GoI and uh KServe and all of those components became complicated for to support things like you know multiple inference runtime, uh, scalable deployment on and off models, um, like was uh, 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 was mesh models, and so I think I think complexity uh, start it, it starts simple, but complexity becomes a reality, unfortunately, long term when people want to run and have one one platform to support multiple things. Um, so yeah, I I hope I think I think uh, you're already aware of that, and I I like the idea of being lean sometimes, uh, but also like you, the, you know, one of my comments was you could benefit also from like the work, you know, whatever plugin that is being built upstream. I think. You're probably going to be building something similar, and so that synergy or you know collaboration is is going to be important. Agreed. And and in no way do I want to say like you know those projects are the wrong the wrong call. I think that there are there's some cases in in which they're just not feasible uh, for for different teams to adopt those those projects. Um, and we went back and forth on this too, whether or not like how to consume some of the, the the work prior work that was done whether or not to import as a library whether or not to um to rely on as a, as a runtime dependency um and I, I agree with what you're saying which is that you know in the beginning you might say hey we're going to be lean so so we'll just we'll build it from scratch uh, but over time you start to encounter the complexity um and agreed we we have encountered some of that um i think that we lingo i think hits a a slim enough. It there's a feature set that that's required to to make it function that 
that I, I hope that that complexity can be can be contained to some some degree. Yeah, I had one more quick thing that I forgot to show is the messaging integration, which um, I think so is the same concept where you just send a message to a message queue, but then the body is the HTTP request basically that you saw before. So you send that and then Lingo uh, gets that uh, message. It, it, it received the request and queues it with the same similar logic. And then it sends the output to a uh, output topic. And then we, you can, so it's, it's very cool for people that use like Databricks or they use other batch processing systems where they just integrate by sending messages to a pub sub queue. And then here we can see the same response that we saw before. Um, so that's that's the other thing that we are seeing um, used by one of our users who uses this to do large scale batch inference um, um, using Lingo. Yeah. I had another question about uh, pre-provisioning uh, pots. Do you have a mechanism for that? So if someone like uh, maybe uh, they like to pre-provision pots so at a eight a.m. or something in the morning until like twelve p.m. or something like that, and and then scale down afterwards, uh, depending on demand or metrics. Yeah, the way you're gonna answer, Nick. So I think there's 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 kind of two different ways. That we don't have configuration in there to do that. There there's two different ways of doing that. One is that you could just say you're you're gonna. You're going to change your min replicas over time based on a schedule, um, so that would be a pretty easy feature to build in. So Lingo would just have additional configuration to kind of move up and down min replicas, and the rest of it would respond as normal. Uh, I think there's also I need to check what the API says as to this capability, but I think some future the the provisioning request API, which is I, I believe still a work in progress is I think could give you a little bit more a proactive approach there where, where you could submit a provisioning request uh, in the future and instead of just reacting, instead of like having the cluster autoscaler react and hope the capacity is there, I believe that you can, on some clouds, you could get a little bit more capacity a little bit more quickly uh, by integrating directly there. And so in that, in that sense, like Lingo would be directly driving things like those, those APIs. Um, yeah, I don't know if that yeah, makes, was... makes sense. Thanks. A follow-up question. Does Lingo actually have any G GPU awareness or the GPU management is primarily done by something like the LLM or something back? It is currently, it is not aware of the GPUs itself. Um, it doesn't require GPUs for itself to function. Uh, and all the GPU like requests are are contained inside of the deployment at the moment. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I, yeah. Because uh, GPU allocation is uh, one. I think is one challenge. Right? So I guess it's, I guess it will be handled by the deployment itself. Yeah, yeah. The deployment request. So I think that's the thing that we try to help the users with. Like we will. Like in our Helm charts, we know like this model requires this amount of L4 GPUs or this amount of like, that's something, uh, yeah, it, it's just, we just rely on native Kubernetes there. Like the pod requests X amount of GPUs and it will get X amount of GPUs. And we use node selectors to guide it, which kind of GPUs. Um, but yeah, there's nothing built into Lingo to, to handle that automatically for the user. And that gets us so far. So like right now, if you think about that approach, like you're, the GPUs required for a given model are static to the deployment. Uh, but I think we can get a little bit smarter here, where instead of saying, um, you know, we're just going to scale up this model whenever we, this deployment, whenever we see this model, we can maybe be a little bit, we can maybe be aware of capacity and then scale up the, the uh, for, you know, to be cost sensitive or to be performance sensitive or, or something of the sort. That makes sense. Thanks. Any other questions? A few folks on the call. Klaus, I saw you unmuted yourself. Do you have a question? 
no no for myself all right cool all right i think uh there are we don't have any more questions i mean uh we can just call it a day and, and then say thank you very much for presenting and oh one follow-up but are you, are you planning to engage the cncf for or, or this is uh or you haven't even thought about it uh, in terms of like uh, uh, maturity of the project and where you want, where you'd like to take the project. We're currently just driving the project based on user feedback, um, but we I think when you reached out on on our repo, that was kind of the first time we started thinking about CNCF uh, in a, in in a way other than just being a consumer and uh, collaborator of other projects, but. Um, what, what would your recommendation be? Do you see any, any, any future here where you know CEF engagement could could help? Well, it, it can help in terms of the community and contributors and and making you know the ecosystem aware of the existence of the project and how it can be used. Right? Um, uh, there are multiple ways, uh, you know, within the you know engaging with the CNCF like um you know events like KubeCon and um webinars webinars or 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 other types of uh, avenues that they have so yeah so so that and, and then uh, in terms of like maturity the CNCF has uh, sandbox and incubation and graduated projects. Uh, so typically projects start with applying for sandbox, but if the project is mature enough, they can go straight for incubation. Uh, and that depends on the number of end users or the adoption. And if it, if it's a very mature project, then typically they go for incubation uh, and then in transition to graduated maybe in, in about a year or something. Once once it's widely, widely uh, deployed in say production environments but it, i mean it looks like it's uh, you're more at the stage of sandbox but um, i mean it could be wrong but uh, but that's one option yeah yeah i think the other like we we both are we both enjoy really working in the open source community so like i think wherever we feel like i think someone had a good call out like katie has is working on a plugin like maybe we can collaborate some there too that'll be that'll be fun um, so the other thing that I noticed that this runtime, I, I checked the chart. I'm not sure if it's updated recently, but there were things like hardware. And one thing that caught my eye, which I still feel is a bit of a gap in the overall ecosystem is a, a good open source model registry that can be used in cluster to cache models, basically like an in cluster hugging phase. So you don't have to download all your models. And I know hardware. I think you can use registries for that, but that will be something that I'm actually quite interested in in um yeah, yeah. collaborating more on. Yeah, yeah there also there, there have been conversations about having like an OCI compliant uh, model registry, but that yeah. nobody has actually implemented that. Yep. Uh, um uh, but yeah, that's what that's one thing that uh, the community can work on. Um I'd also like to throw out that we also, we have a WG artificial intelligence working group. Um, it's a different channel that's in the same ecosystem, and and we have a lot of stuff going on there with uh, uh, creating reference architectures. And we just published a validated AI white paper about a month ago, right before KubeCon. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff there and, and opportunities to collaborate with the community and on solving common problems you know, uh, that, that could be useful for the whole ecosystem. Ooh, yeah, that's a great suggestion. We'll make sure to get plugged in there. Yeah. So the, read the, um, the model registry. Um, there are things like uh, kite ops, uh, you know, projects, new projects that try and be uh, build model the model registry story that you're just highlighting, uh, Sam. So maybe you could have a look as well. I put the link in the chat. 
Uh, yeah. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, thank you so much, and and yeah, and uh, and let's keep in touch. Yeah. No. Thank you. Thanks for giving the time. Right. Thank you, everyone. Bye.